So the first thing I noticed is um, you wanted them to listen to those sounds, right? Yeah. But I totally understand this because I do this kind of thing too. But then, like, you were passing some stuff out, like you were doing other things instead uh -huh. of taking like 30 seconds and being totally quiet. Okay. And I, I'm, I'm just saying because I'm like, oh, I got a couple seconds, I can do this and this. Um, but for that specific activity, uh, if you want them to like Calm down. listen to those sounds, just the yeah. sounds that are in the video, then, um, but like it just, it made me laugh because I did the same thing. Um, so I think like you talked about m many, many times, not many, many, but there were times where you talked, like you talked about visualize. Yeah. This is one I, you talked about the definition, which yeah. is maybe more of an English thing. And you mentioned that they're probably because you do that in reading. Yeah. But, um, putting that, like talking about the definition for our demographic. Is really good, right? Okay. Like, because those kids need, I think, a little bit extra support, making for sure. You, like, you want to make for sure they know the definition. Oh, so that's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. And well, I think you I, know. I picked it because we use it a lot in standards. Visualize, right. visualize, visualize. Right. And my kids don't know what it means when they're in fourth grade, and it's like a, I know in the standards for like second or third is probably it. It's in there. We, we use visualize. So, We've already done it this year. Okay. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, and we've been if doing they it don't know lot. that definition, that mm -hmm. makes it hard. So, yeah, and this going goal, this over goal it. And literacy, so I'm kind of like. <laughs> so, yeah, right. Like, that's my main focus. Like, there's a lot of stuff in grade one, especially for our demographic. Like, if we can just get them to read in grade one, mm -hmm. and they learn nothing in some other subjects, we don't care because like we need them to learn. So yeah. for our demographic, them knowing definitions, I think is really important. So going over that and talking about it and asking questions about it so they understand is good. Um, and then using pairs to chat with each other, um, I think that's good. And then you were walking around asking them, like, that checking stuck for with one group though because it was like two kids that are like, they don't wanna be together. Maybe deal with, but I just said I'm gonna be in your group, and we t I talked with them like this. But the other kids were, I gave you three minutes, but I think after like a minute and a half they were done, so they're kind of uh, messing okay. around. So I had to cut it down. Oh yeah, well you know being mm -hmm. adaptable is good, but that's a good time too to check for understanding, like okay. how much, like when they're talking with each other, like if they're not talking at all, maybe they don't understand at all. Yeah. So that's a good strategy for that. Um, yeah, you did lots of. Definitions, explaining English words. Um, another thing I thought was really good, you did it three different times that I noted. Oh, yeah, um, you were talking about function and the kids said their job. Like that was, like I you can tell the, their understanding yeah. when they can be like, oh, it's like their job. Yeah, right? And I use, I, I use that like instead of my meaning because I think it's more meaningful to them when they realize, hey, my meaning's good. He's yeah. There, so right. Wanted. Right. And it, yeah, it, it, um, I thought it explained it better than me, anyways. <laughs> Maybe, I mean, I think if they use, like you, like you just said, if they use something that is the definition and you using it, I mean, mm -hmm. that's like that makes them feel like they're understanding that, you know, boosts their self esteem and stuff like that. So, um, this is one, you have like three different times where. You're using good visual ideas, like visual, visual. You're visualizing, so helping please. them visualize. Yeah, when you were talking about uh, who who uh, lets people in and out of our campus. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like that, those kids understand. Like, oh yeah, the guard shack, the bond. They're the ones who regulate who comes in and out. Yeah. And then roots are like straws. Yeah. Like that's. Er Everyone knows what straws are like. And then batteries. You also use batteries. For mitochondria. Yeah. yeah. Like the energy of the cell. Yeah. And so those are all like very uh, practical things for them that make mm. sense to them. So, and then 
Yeah, that clearly helps them. Was going around with the video okay, like seeing what they're doing? I think, was that well, confusing? it's helpful. No, no. That was helpful. And then for them to take those notes, yeah. right? Like they had the opportunity to look at all of those and take notes, and then they fill out that. Thing. Kind of, this, it was so I blew up the worksheet, but I did. They have two versions. They have like the easy version, which is you color in, okay. and then they have the hard version, which you label. And the original plan was to have them watch a video and label while they're okay. watching. And I'm just like, no, I want them to move around. I think I, I notice they get a lot more out out of it when they're moving around, especially a few of my students. Yeah. So instead uh -huh. of sitting there and watching, because they do that all day, like. Right. I had them, I blew up the easy version, I colored in like the one part, yep. and then the kids... And blacked out. And I blacked yeah. out. I did that so that they don't stop and like just cheat, and not cheat, but like just look at one. Or I, get wanted, I just right. wanted to move around. So, yeah, great strategy. Um, and I noticed if I broke in the cell into like seven easy parts, it was a little more, like I'm going to go over that again today, but I think it was a little more manageable for them because there's a lot yeah. of scary words that even like adults, if I go around out on the street and say, hey, what's a cytoplasm? Like most right. adults are going to be like, oh, something in a cell, but they right. don't know what it is. Right. So, but my, I felt like, I felt my, my kids, I would say 50%. Like, which I want to get it higher today, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. but I felt like 50% got, like, they got 50% out of that activity as an ESL learner. So okay. I, I hope I can get more. Okay. Um, obviously, I think 80 is a better goal, but. Well, <laughs> good to shoot. <laughs> Those right. are hard words. Well, and th they are. And then another thing you did, I think that's helpful, is you had them repeat the word to you. Mm -hmm. And then you also broke it down into chunks. You yeah. Did, right? Um, in front of the class and when. They were going around in. Um, mm -hmm. I don't need specials to know how to spell it. Um, that's not my goal. But I do want, if I say mitochondria, yeah. I want a kid to think of like batteries. Yeah. If I think uh, cell wall or, or cell membrane, I want mm -hmm. to think of the gate. Right. Cell wall could be outside of the school. Yeah, I agree. I don't think spelling is necessarily. Like, and they should be able to say it. So yeah. Those are they can say it properly say so it, that read someone it, else. And, 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 and and, and if I say it, it they know kind of what it is. Yeah. Um, which I think I need to review that, but anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, can kids say the words? Yeah, those are my main. And I think, like, one of these is assessment. Um, yeah, just being involved in the class, mm -hmm. then you're, and talking with them, you're always kind of just gauging where they are. And I think sometimes you moved right on. And then other times you have to do them. <laughs> yeah, like and asking them questions to get them along. Yeah. So like that's just kind of constant assessment. And like when you realize, oh, like they understood this and we'll keep moving. And then here we need to talk about this a little bit longer. There were um, a few just places that, where the kid was having trouble. And I kind of right. left it at that to keep them going, but I have to go revisit it. But there's a few the like of having some time, but yeah. And then there was a few kids like with us. One kid surprised me, I won't say the name, just, but he surprised me. Like he knew, he knew like what he was doing and I was like, oh, so he does get it, but he usually has trouble in a lot of things. Oh, okay. So I thought it was cool. Good. Um, it was more direct instruction with that activity, so. Um, yeah, but I think then moving around, yeah. I mean, he, like if you haven't, if moving around is good for a couple kids, it's not like it's, it's kid, not, it wasn't hurting, it was helping right. the three kids that need to move around. And the other and they, kids got out of it. Yeah, they still, like even though they could be able to sit there all day and yeah, listen notes. and take notes, getting up and moving around is still a really good thing for them. Just like, one of even the, if they don't need it. One of the children was able to, um, usually he never takes notes, but this mm -hmm. time he took like some piece yeah. of notes and I was like, oh, okay, he can do it, he just needs to stand up. Yeah. Yeah, so if you have success with one, yeah. like that, you know, it's totally worth it, so. I, I didn't get to the last activity, the labeling, because like some kids finished later. It was like, oh. those are the reasons like centers or different activities, mm -hmm. like um, it's, I'm gonna have to get going, but like the hard part is kids finish at so many different times, you always have to be ready for like, the next kid. Mm -hmm. Or like a fast finish. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, good job though. Okay.